Good morning. It's Friday, April 2nd. Yep, it is. Easter's here this, uh, this Sunday. So I am so glad that you are joining me here. I, <laughs> Wednesday was the worst, okay? And what we figured out was wrong. There was no way it was going to get fixed on Wednesday because with this new computer, you have to like unlock certain things. And John was, it probably took him, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to figure out the whole thing. So we'll start on Monday and um, go from there. I so apologize, but oh well, things happen. <laughs> I guess you get what you pay for. I don't know. So I want to see, I haven't seen any comments. I want to make sure. Oh, good. We see people here. So happy Easter is right. Let me tell you something really fun that they are doing in our area, and it's too late for you guys to do it, but it might be a good thing to put in your coffers for next year. Uh, some, I don't know how, I don't know if they're young moms or soccer moms or if they're high school kids. I haven't figured it out, but it's called something like um, Let Us Egg You. And what they do is you can buy into three levels of being egged, and I think it's like a $15, a $20, a $25, and I chose the $20, and that gets 30 eggs put in somebody's front yard. And in those eggs, they ask, you know, are there any allergies and things like that? And so somewhere in the middle of the night, the Easter Bunny is going to come. So I did it for my next door neighbors. My I call them the adorables, the two little girls. They're the ones that feed our cats when we're gone. And then across the street, they have three kids, one of which is a newborn. I think I talked about being able to see Caroline, like, just come home from the hospital. And so next door, um, turns out it, they're not going to be around. And so... Um, I'm rescheduling the egg it to some to my daughter. So now her kids are getting like, you know, 50 or 60 eggs or whatever. But what a great fundraiser, right? What a great fundraiser. Let us egg you. And speaking of eggs, we are going to have Easter here, but we're doing it not the traditional way. We're having steaks, potatoes, deviled eggs. That was my mom's thing and a nice salad. Yay, easy. And then the other thing uh, we always had, and so we're doing it, is we have a, um, a lemon ice cream pie from Lord's with chocolate. That's what my mom always did. But deviled eggs. John bought an Instapot a while back, and honestly, it's just one more thing. But I will tell you this. If you have an Instapot, it makes those deviled eggs like there's no, uh, they, not the deviled eggs. It makes, it hard boils the eggs and they don't stick. You know, like when you're trying to peel eggs and they're just like a big fat mess, mm -mm, not with the Instapot. So that's good news. One other thing, I just want to show you a couple show and tells. Uh, at the end of the month, I'm going to be taking a virtual Joanne Sharp workshop and it's three days. It is the last Friday of the month. And I said to John, John, how about if you take that Friday and we do a thing called Ask John or something like that? And he's like, oh, I don't know that I want to do it. And I'm like, I don't know that I'm even going to give you a choice. So what do you guys think of Ask John? He wants to scoot around the website and I'm saying, no, Ask John. <laughs> so let me show you what I got because I know we quilters all like sparkly things. Well, at least I do. And this is not for quilting. This is for Joanne's class. Here's my book. I've shared with you in the past. This was January, February. There we go. And it's a junk journal. So here's some of my pages that I've done. This was actually a little quilted postcard, and it scared me to paint on it, but I did. But I started to get kind of, oh, God, this is so much fun. I can't stand it. And I realized I could never be Joanne. I could only be Alex. And in being Alex, let's see our little things in here. I, I am more of the world of graphic design. This is more me, all right? But then I started getting into bling. I found this bling on 
in my stuff. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to put that in. And then um, I love Lady of uh, Guadalupe. And so I wanted pomegranates for mitzvah. Uh, when you are of the Jewish faith, you have to do like 633, I might have the numbers wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, of good deeds, which represent the, the seeds in a pomegranate before you die. And so that, but then I started, then I, I realized this came from something that I threw away and I was just furious at myself. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff from a lady who makes saris and in a cleaning moment, and I always give myself permission to do something stupid when I'm cleaning. I got rid of stuff. So let me show you this page I'm working on right now. Um, so Joanne said, never fear Etsy's here. <laughs> so I went and I I went and I rebought this stuff. You know, look at this stuff. It's out of this world. I, oh, there's Sparrow. She just knocks something over. I mean, there were even some like, with, look at this, with little mirrors on it and all that. Okay, well, enough is enough. That's uh, one last textile I wanted to show you was this. My mom made this. It needs to be restuffed. But isn't that the cutest? Happy Easter, Peter Rabbit. Okay, so today we're going to go talk to Shelly Hesacker. She has been producing our shows for a very, very, very long time, and she's going to explain what's in it for when she goes and makes a show for us, and where did she come from, and how did she end up with us, and all of that. So let's take a look at Shelly. May I please introduce to you Shelly Hesacker. Woo! Hi, everyone. So Shelly is the producer of The Quilt Show. And if you enjoy what you're watching, it's Shelly. If you don't like mm. it, it's Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So listen, I really appreciate you taking time out to do this because people really, if they've been on the quilt show, they get it. But if they, if they haven't, they don't understand the magic behind and people, the magic behind is Shelly. Um, mm. But let's start with what is a producer? Because if you're not in the biz, you might think it's director or it's this or it's that. What is a producer, Shelly? Well, it is the most confusing thing for most people because there's many types of producers. But for the purpose of the quilt show, once we decide who the guest is going to be, I decide what the guest is. I With the guest, I decide what the guest is going to talk about and how the show is going to look. What What are the magic moments? And ultimately, I'm trying to create an experience for the viewers at home, because I want the viewers at home to feel something. And so how I do that is by talking with the guests to get a lot of information. And then I start piecing together, what are the threads that tie this show together? And so that we can present a package. But what I tell other people, because no one knows what a producer does is I'm a storyteller, um, but my craft or my, my medium isn't fabric. My medium is people's stories. And, um, the I, other way to look at it, the other way to look at it is if you see movie directors, I'm like a movie director because I hold the vision for the show, but it's interesting because movie directors in the film business are what producers are in the television business. And producers in the film business are the money people who assemble the team. So that's why you and Ricky and Justin and John are the executive producers. You're really like the movie producers. And yeah, then we're, or like the we're the bank. director. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, yes. um, it's really, it's, I'm surprised that TQS has you because your back, but I love, but your background is not crafting. It's not this. What is your background in the television industry and period, you know? So I uh, have been in television for 34 years and my 
dream when I started, I wanted to make talk shows. That was my passion. And I was in a dorm room when I was 19 and I saw a talk show on TV and I thought, oh my gosh, because I went to school to be a teacher. And then I quickly learned I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> I thought, well, how can I educate people and entertain people? Because I have a bit of a theater background. And when I saw talk shows, it all came together. So I have been doing television. It's been my number one passion. But my early passion was to work for someone. I'm having visual aids because I'm a producer. But <laughs> my... <laughs> Hold it. This my. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, let's make it. So, uh, my passion was to work for Oprah Winfrey. And um, it took eight and a half years, but I eventually got to work for her. And I worked from her with her from 2000 to the end of her show. And then I've worked with her since then. And I've worked with Dr. Phil and pretty much any big name you can know on TV because I'm I'm free for hire, so whoever wants me <laughs> right, right. gets me. Right. Well, I think it's kind of interesting how we got you. Well, it is an interesting story because in uh, 2009, it was shortly after the recession hit. And I thought, well, television's always going to be on the uh, television's always going to be on, so I won't be affected. But the Oprah show and the Dr. Phil show started using Skype interviews to interview their guests, which meant they didn't need to send someone like me out into the to to fly to wherever the guests lived and tell their story because they were doing it over Skype. So I suddenly didn't have work, and so I talked to some video buddies of mine and someone who taped with our show said, well, I've got a quill client um, and they'd have about a week's worth of work. And I said, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I thought, well, it's cute. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and it was actually eye opening when I got in and I thought, well, this is more than just quilts. You know, this is fantastic. This is art. This is amazing. And Ricky and Alex came to me and they said, would you consider producing our show? And because I up, said, because wait, up to that point, you were like a, a runner, a runner or whatever. I mean, you just did yeah. whatever, right? I was an assistant. I was yeah. an assistant. And so, but being who I am, I couldn't keep my mouth quiet about how you could improve this or that, or, you know, you could do this. And so by the end of the production, uh, you and Ricky pulled me aside and said, would you consider producing our show? And do you remember what I said? <laughs> because you're not a quilter. Yes, because if you think about it, the way producers work is we are always thinking about our audience. We're always thinking about what will the audience like? And if I don't quilt, how can I tell the difference between a Lemoyne star or an Ohio star, which now I know, but um, but how can I tell what a what a quilter is going to get excited about? And so I said, no, I'm not the right person. And you told me, do you remember what you told me? It's probably what Weller Grossman told me. Which is? Which is they told me when they wanted me to host, they could teach me television, but they couldn't teach somebody quilting. And I probably said to you, we can teach you quilting, we, but you know producing. Is that what I said? That's exactly, that's exactly what you said. And you believe <laughs> and so, me, sucker. <laughs> well, I said, well, let's give it a try and we'll see how it goes. And now uh, of the like 360 shows that you've had, that you've created, I've produced about 300 of them. Yeah. So, yeah. so I guess it's been, it's been working. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's been working out. Okay. Um, now here's what, what is it like for you to produce this in the medium that you didn't know about? And now really everybody, she knows this stuff now. I mean, it's once in a blue moon, she'll say, I don't know. And then we'll say this or this, right? Well, yeah, yes. And I still need your, your brains and your understanding. There isn't a taping that goes by where you go, ah! and I said, what are you? What does that about? mean? 
<laughs> what what does that mean? Because I don't I don't read Alex. I don't understand. And you're like, oh, look at the fabrics. I'm like, is it the color? Is it the texture? And you then you explain what it is to me because it is still a little bit like going blind uh, in this. But what I have found because. I was really worried about how do I produce a show when I don't know yeah. how to create a quilt. And so I started listening to the artists that we have on our show, their stories. And what came up for me is in every show, we're going to see quilts and you're going to learn how to do something in every show that is that's and, and the quilters know what's a big deal and the hosts know what's a big deal. But what, isn't always known and what artists don't always talk about themselves is why they quilt why do they do this why do they do that and so i've been tapping into the why of what the artists do and it has made a world of difference and so it's it's really um i and and i try to make sure that each show represents the artist so if they're kind of funny I try to have a funny show. If they're more serious, I try to have a more serious show. I try to have the shows reflect who they are. And and you and Ricky do a beautiful job of helping wrangle that, too. It is a team effort. Um, so here's the thing. Okay, we still haven't gotten you to quilt. However, people, <laughs> you've spent money on quilts. <laughs> well, yes, I have. And... Uh, <laughs> And I thought I would do a little bit of show and tell because, you know, being that we have, uh, I, I have so many visual aids here, but this is my first quilt that I bought. Um, oh, I oh, saw oh, this. It's Nancy. Was it Nancy Smith? Nope. It was a Pat Yamin show. And, but this is a uh, Daya Weibo and it's by Maria Tamako, who's in New York who made this, it's a two patch quilt. We were talking about two patches and I just love this. What I loved about it is, you know, how wonky, you know, everything's so straight, but then the sashing is, see sashing terminology. No, you it's said wonky, wonky two patch <laughs> sashing. I was going to start making notes. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know, I don't know if, um, if the quilters at home, um, know this i mean they can go watch the shows if they want and see that quilt on the wall but then then so i kind of got the bug then but um not to make then, a quilt people to spend money on quilts no no <laughs> because you know there's enough quilt makers in the world and we love you all and we want to encourage that but you need to have quilt admirers and so we were gonna have katie pasquini mossapus on the show so we got her book on and I was looking through it and I opened up the page and I saw <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> OMG. See, there's even an O in the quilt. And so um, <laughs> Katie Katie was having a sale on her quilts. Oh and, and I I took advantage. And so this actually hangs on my living room wall and it was because of the quilt show that i i listened to all the color theory on the quilt show i learned how to paint my house based on picking colors because it's just fascinating what you can learn on the quilt show anyway, so, <laughs> then we had a guest grace aria don't you love show and tell? I'm <laughs> snorting. I'm snorting. Look, now it's a little known fact that I love cats. Yes. How many do you have? And I have seven. Okay. And um, so anyway, um, Grace Aria makes these beautiful portrait quilts. And um, so I got the wild idea. Why not have my babies quilted? So she has done four quilts for me. Um, so that's, that's that. Then, <laughs> then, I know it's not over yet. Barbara Black, who has saved the day on the quilt show more than one time. 
She presented me, the last time I was in, um, last August, she presented me with her Shiloh quilt. And this quilt is stunning. And honestly, this is probably me in fabric. And I don't, I will probably never make a quilt, but if I could make a quilt, I'd probably want to make this one uh, because it's just beautiful. And Barbara Black, this is a treasure forever. And now because of Barbara, I am painting my bedroom so that, and I got a quilt rack so I can hang this one in my bedroom. So are you getting the picture? Oh, I'm getting, but, I got the wait. picture five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, there's more. Then on a very sad day in January, in a very sad day in January, um, Alex had to leave taping the first time in all the times we've been taping because your mother um, was saying bye-bye. She was saying bye-bye. And Cindy Needham happened to be on the show and she carried the show on without you. And on that show, she was teaching these little girl hankies. And so I don't, can you see detail on that? Yeah, you can tilt it a little bit. Huh. Okay. Okay. There. Yeah. 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 There. yeah, yeah. You like that? Yeah. S, an S with my, my initial. I mean, this, I mean, the, the swag alone from working from this show. Now, not to be outdone, then look what Alex did. The next day she comes back from her mom passing away in all grief. And she has a gift for me too, one of these little girl hankies, and it has a cat, a little a cat in it. And these two will be in my bedroom next to the Barbara Aww. Black thing. So you can see I've been affected. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, have you? Has it changed your producing at all, or 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 how how you think about things now when you hit the road with us, or how have we changed you besides <laughs> spent your money? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you, it does. Like I was mentioning that it um, informed how I painted my house. But also what I notice about quilters, if there's a theme, is that I learned that quilters pay attention to what they love. At least the quilters who are really advanced and think further about their quilting, they really know what they love and why they love it. And that that change that's a game changer when you start going through life thinking well what is it that i love about a painting or what is it that i love about this furniture or what is it that i love about it and so i quilters seem to know that because they know that they love fabric maybe they haven't thought about why they like it but that has really changed how i look at the world now and then on top of that i noticed that quilters um are good problem solvers. They are, there isn't a problem that they can't figure out. And I really like the ingenuity that they come up with. And there also seems to be a sense of fun because anyone who watches the quilt show will know that we have a lot of puns, <laughs> a lot of alliteration, a lot of little silly corny things that happen like with Justin's cold opens. I couldn't do that for any other show except for the quilt show. So that sense of fun, the sense of problem solving creates a community of people that are really fun to play with. Yeah. And, I, and, I agree. and, and it's changed, it's changed me because um, this isn't really so what, work. It's can you fun. sing um, I've been changed for the better? <laughs> I have been changed for good. <laughs> I've heard it said that people come into your life for a reason from Wicked, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of my favorite musicals. Okay, so I, I, I got it. I know. <laughs> That's why. Okay, couple <laughs> couple more things. Um, what are the ch any challenges, or was it just getting the speed bump of the whole thing? Well, um, I think the ongoing challenge that we have. Uh, with the quilt show is that there seems to be a traditional quilt camp and an art quilt camp. And, you know, people can say, well, oh, I don't make those kind of quilts or whatever. But I can guarantee you 
if you watch the quilt show, there is some nugget yes. you can take away on every single show. We try to we try to do a little bit that feeds everyone, something that's there for the traditional folks, something that's there for the art folks, but there is something for everyone every time we do a show. And I know that because I see you and Ricky <laughs> having big reactions <laughs> to, and so I know we are giving good information. And um, I, I, I also want to say just working with you and Ricky, um, I can I can only bring so much to the table in terms of here's some ideas, but then you guys take it and you are so open-minded about, I mean, probably the worst thing that you do is you say yes to pretty much most everything that I ask. Or if I say, let's try this or let's you, you say yes. And that's really opened a lot of doors. So the challenges are just getting the vision created. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that takes time. And so, well, um, real quickly, we just learned that you can sing uh, and anything else. Um, and you're a weirdo probably, cat lady. <laughs> I am a weirdo. I'm a crazy cat lady for sure. Um, probably, I think what one thing I wanted to show that probably most people don't know, um, if we're talking about producing and you want to learn about producing, um, I wanted to just showcase a little bit like this is a typical quilt show. One, just one quilt show. Oh, I'm not showing it very well. This no, but it's like pages. One, it's pages because I do a lot with my old noodle. Um, so, for example, Young Mean Lee, who is the current right now, yeah, who's on. Yes. So but this is her. This is her. Let, let Let me make sure her address is not there but this is this is her um pre-interview that i i did when i asked her a bunch of questions and this starts the whole process of doing the quilt show then once i kind of talk to all the artists we come up with now this is going to look like one of those redacted papers because uh -huh. <laughs> i blocked everyone's <laughs> but then i come up with a contact sheet that has all the artists who's going to be on the show and what they're going to be doing on the show and who the crew are going to have on the show for that day. So I'm in charge of all that. Then I come up with what's called a content outline. Alex loves these. <laughs> I, I, I read them at night, every <laughs> night, every <laughs> night, even when I'm home. Yes. But the interesting thing about these is that they, this is the plan yeah. on paper. This is every, this is my brain about the show on paper. And it says all the topics we're going to talk about. And then I give this information to Alex and Ricky, who then translate that for you at home with the guest. But here I will, um, I will write out what Justin's going to say or do. You know, everything is put down in here. Then we get to, I think. So, so I in other words, out, people people don't just show up and do their thing. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I no. guess not. And then, and then after a show is done, we create what's considered um, the edit notes. Because the editor sometimes doesn't see these shows for six months after we've taped them. Yeah. And so if he calls me up and he says, uh, what was the name of that second quilt that you showed? I won't remember. So we have to have detailed notes so the, the editor gets it right. And all of that's under my jurisdiction of making sure that the editor gets things right. And then if there's a field piece in the show that I have shot or with the team have shot at some point, I create a script I that. Yeah. <laughs> and should and I tell shows... them the real, and, and the real secret with that is sometimes, most of the time, all the time, when we're talking about it, we haven't seen it yet either. And we're counting on you. Right. You're totally counting on me. So I have to have my ducks in a row. I have to be fairly organized to, and I have to be fairly creative and fun and willing to let things flow because you can only produce things and organize things up to a moment and have a plan, but then you gotta let things happen. Right. Just like some quilters, you plan the quilt out, but then as you're doing it, you like, mm, 
oh, I could do that. They all have a mind of their own and a personality. Shelly. And it's the same thing with shows. I love you. Mm. I I love you. I mean, seriously, Alex, I, I count you as a friend and... And what people don't know about you, uh -oh. if we can talk about you. <laughs> we're is almost that... out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we are. But <laughs> but I know. But let me just say this. It's so important because Alex really is a go-to person for me. And when I'm debating or having any question about anything, she keeps me on the straight and narrow. She really holds the bigger vision than me for the show and it is a team effort we all do but really she is you are amazing and i'm honored to work with you well, thank and, you. and we're both for I the better we can, we're both for the yeah. better <laughs> yeah i hope we can continue to have some fun and, yeah. and do this yeah 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 okay thank you so much shelly i'm gonna hit finish and i don't know if that's gonna mean i'm gonna be finished with you completely or if i can still talk to you after but thank you so much and i hope this was enlightening to everybody i learned some stuff here i really did well i just want you to know i actually put on kind of lip color which i never do i know uh and so i did this because i'm never in front of the camera and i prefer it that way because <laughs> How many times when you say our producer, Shelly, if anyone's sitting in the control room with me, I'm like, oh, I hate it when they mention my name. Come on, so. Gilman, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right. Thank okay. you. Nice talking with you. you Bye, too. everyone. Bye-bye. Well, that was super fun. Shelly, thank you. And Shelly was watching. Wasn't that cute? We do have fun together. Uh, Shelly did, somebody asked, who picks the guests? And Shelly answered it. It's a group effort. I mean, we all have different places where we're out and see different things. And one of the main things is that we try. Huh? I'm back on the screen. I'm back on the screen. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Here we go. Is it still black, John? Yes. I did pick my camera. All right. I don't, I guess I'm just going to say that I'm going to go to black. <laughs> I don't, I don't like my new computer, John. <laughs> so anyways, also while we're at black, Janice um, O'Farrell, I wrote down your name and John will look into it. No black screen. What we need is a green screen. Oh, we just got to see something here. If I lose you, like we should, if I lose you, I lose you. Now John's in here. Well, where are you? you trying to go there? No, That's I where you want to go. To get out of huh. Huh. Well, I will say this, everybody. Um, yes, Shelly Hesacker, it was a great interview. People really, really loved it. And um, everybody, if you celebrate Easter, have a lovely, lovely weekend. And I don't know what's going on with this crazy, crazy thing. So take care. See you Monday and we'll get back in fabric shopping. I may have to go to my old computer. Bye-bye.